hey everybody it's Andrea and I'm back I know it's been a while <coughs> excuse me welcome back we're going to be carrying on with tenderful enchantments and colouring our puppy um, obviously he's pretty much done it's uh, the rest of them I'm also currently watching the um, episodes of Doctor Who on iPlayer which is BBC so yes it's been a while um, I do apologise so I'm going to continue with these bells down here so why has it been time? There's a lot, been a lot going on. So first of all, I want to say welcome back to all the subscribers who have been subscribed for a while and who stuck with me. I know I haven't been posting much lately. And I also want to say welcome to any new subscribers. Thank you for joining me. And if you've all, all um, if you're not a subscriber, but you've just dropped in, hello, thank you. Consider subscribing. You don't have to, it's entirely up to you. Anyway, yes, it's been all go. I've had problems with my car. I'm going to start with this now before we get on to the um, colouring community drama that's been going on. We will talk about it, but not yet because, you know. So, yeah, it's been very, um, here. Yeah, I had problems with my car. Um, I had to have a new starter motor and a new battery. So it wasn't very cheap, but it is now working again, which is a relief because obviously... I use my car a lot to take Jennifer to and from nursery to get the shopping. Um, yeah. So while, of course, I was walking her to nursery, it's a good couple of mi miles a day. Well, it's probably three or four miles a day. Plus everything else I've got to do as well. Kind of knackered me out. It wore me out big time. So I don't feel like colouring. Or at least filming colouring, but um, I, I'm up to, back up to it now, I feel like it, which is great. And also Paul's watching the football, which is great, so I don't feel guilty about leaving on his own to come up and film, like I do sometimes. Um, he does moan sometimes if I come up and leave him to himself. Because we don't see each other much, even though we're both working at home, because obviously I'm dealing with Jennifer and he's working, and then I've got put her to bed and then of course we usually sit together in the evening but I am not into football in fact I hate the bloody sport I gotta say I hate most sports not just football it says uh work's been very busy so that's been exhausting as well um so yeah it's been very very hard work getting things done but I am back and I have been colouring, I have bought books, I have bought supplies, so you'll be seeing those in a haul. Um, and the next day or so I might film one tomorrow night and, and get it up tomorrow night, it'd be uh, the haul first, it usually is. I'm waiting on a book to come tomorrow, I still haven't had my Colouring Heaven subscription, which is due any day, it could come tomorrow, it didn't come today, it was out today, but it hasn't come yet. <laughs> That's fine, it doesn't bother me, it'll get here when it gets here. I can't guarantee I'm going to get to a shop where they have it, uh, especially at the moment, so I'm quite happy to wait. It's the Halloween one. I'm really excited to get it, can't wait. I love the Halloween one, it's always my favourite, the Halloween episode. Oh, I've missed something. Um, episode issue, the Halloween issue is always one of my favourites, so... Yeah. I cannot wait. That's not that done. So, yeah, just thinking now what colour to use. I'm going to use this one. What's been going on? For me, other than that, well, I've been working and I have done some colouring and I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, not just colouring ones, obviously, because I do watch a lot of others. I haven't filmed a lot of TikTok lately, but if you know me and you've watched our, the weekly vlog, you'll know we recently got a little kitten. His name is Zed and he's nine weeks old. He's very cute, very sweet. He's currently sitting on Paul. In fact, when I went down here just now to get my pencil sharpener, he was actually sitting on Paul's shoulder, uh, licking his ear. Yeah, she likes to sit on me and Paul. Jennifer is a bit wary of because she's three and a half. She can be a bit rough without realising so we're very careful when we leave him with her. We don't leave them on their own 
just to be on the safe side. She wouldn't hurt him intentionally, um, but she probably wouldn't realise that she was hurting him if she did, you know, so. Um, yeah, he's very sweet. He follows us around. If, if, if you go down to the bathroom in the night, because we've got a downstairs bathroom, he'll come out from wherever he is and he'll start meowing. He'll follow you around. He'll try and climb up your leg. Um, which is no good for Paul because he <laughs> tried to climb up Paul's leg the other day and Paul hadn't, didn't have any trousers on so he's got really nasty scratches down his leg. But he'll hold on to your leg while you're walking. <laughs> he's so funny. He's very, very cute. There's pictures of him on my Instagram. There's pictures. There's, he's in the weekly vlog. If you want to go have a quick look, you'll see him in there. So that's all good. Jennifer's fine. She's at school for two hours a day now, as well as her nursery, and she's enjoying it, which is the main thing. Just trying to think what else um, has happened. My dad got rid of his car because he was having problems with his as well. So we were both without a car for a while. So now we've got mine. That's great. So... Drama in the colouring community in that video. I have watched it. Um, it hurt a lot of people apparently. Um, and they've, you know, obviously their feelings are valid if it hurt, hurt them. I, I personally, it, it, I wasn't bothered by it. It didn't hurt me. It didn't upset me. Uh, I do do a lot of things that this person brought up. I do buy a lot of books. I do buy a lot of supplies. I do have a lot of books I haven't coloured in and a lot of books and supplies that you don't see very often on the channel. Doesn't mean to see mean to say that I don't use them and I'm not going to. Um but it, it it just means I haven't. Every book I have bought I want to colour in at some point. I just don't know when it's gonna happen. Do I think people have overacted? No, because I believe everybody's entitled to their opinion and if people have been hurt They've been hurt for whatever reason. I don't, I don't know whether it's my age. I'm one of the older members of the community. I will say that, that I am older and maybe it's my age, but it really didn't bother me at all. I just thought, fair enough, if that's what you think, that's what you think. Um, maybe it could have been put a bit more diplomatically. Maybe she could have been a bit more gentle, I guess. But it didn't, it didn't upset me, didn't hurt my feelings. It's not that I've got a particularly thick skin, I just think I'm old enough now that I think, well, whatever. Is it going to change the way I behave? Probably not. I keep saying every month I'm going to buy less books and it never works. Um, what I will say though is when she, when they, this person said, I don't know how people afford to buy it, I can justify, I, can, I shouldn't have to justify it, I know people are trying to justify things. I work for a very good company even though I work for it part time in which we get bonuses and we get vouchers for various things, we have various incentives um, and we can choose a voucher for whatever company that's on, on this very very long list of companies, so for instance Amazon is there, so I recent, I've had quite a few vouchers this year for various reasons, the company's done well, we as a team have done well and it's one of their ways of rewarding us. So I, what I choose to spend those vouchers on is nobody's business. It's all mine. I'm also one of the, the larger subscribers. I've not got a huge subscriber rate. I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm under, two, I'm under, over 1,000, but under 1,500. So I am monetized. So I do get money time to time for the channel and that goes straight back in buying uh, supplies or more books. So while I feel for everybody that was hurt, some of what has been said to this person that posted the video has, has gone too far. I get people were hurt and I understand them wanting to make videos to say that they were hurt and, and to explain why they do things the way they do. I don't have a problem with that. I think that's probably a very good thing to do anyway. Uh, just to uh, 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 say, look, this is why I do it. This is how I can afford it. I mean, not that it's anybody's business because I don't believe it is. Um, I forgot what I was saying now. I've lost my train of thought, so I was concentrating on something. Um, I'll, I'll remember it in a minute and I'll be like, oh dear. Anyway, so I get why people were hurt. Personally, 
I love haul videos, they're one of my favourite points of the month, hauls and completed pages. I like to see the hauls, to see what's out there, what I might want, what I haven't got, what I might want to get. I like seeing the coloured pages because I like to see what people have done. Uh, So yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm not a huge channel, but I am monetized and I, I pay stuff back into it. Uh, with regards to being authentic and, and stuff, I've never sent anything back, colouring wise. Never bothered. It's too much hassle. I have, however, given stuff that I don't use away. So for instance, I gave one colouring book to my mum, which was a colouring heaven uh, dogs 2018, because although I've enjoyed colouring this guy, I'm not big on colouring animals and I thought I'm never going to colour in it. That's one I could probably say I would never colour in. So I gave it to my mum because she does a bit of colouring every now and again. She hasn't coloured in it yet, but she will. And I've, I, Dad bought her one book and I bought her Jade Summer Baby Dragons which she's colouring in. I also lent her my marker Raffines but because she's got arthritis I think they're a little bit too hard for her. So today I took down a set of pencils that I've have used in the past, have used on the channel but don't use at the moment and those were uh, the feeler pencils. I don't even think you can get them in the UK now but you could back in the day a few years ago. I haven't used them for a while, they're not my favourite pencils. I love my polys and I love my prismas so I'm not going to use them. That's fine, that's down to me. I haven't been them, I've put them in there. I've recycled them, I've given them to somebody who who will use them? Um, they're a lot softer pencil, so I think they will be better for mum, my mum to use. So I'm glad about that. I'm glad to. I'm happy to to give things to my mum. Now I need a, a sort of a this kind of green. What colour is that? Say May green. What's this one? Yeah, it's green. Yeah, just have a look at these. That's quite a good one. Oh yeah, that's very good. We use these two. So yeah, I mean, I there is stuff I haven't used, but I do want. I want to carry in every single book I've got. I want to use all the supplies I've got. I've, I bought some stuff today. Nobody should have to justify why they've bought something. But everybody is entitled to an opinion. It's like assholes. Everybody's got one. You have to agree with it. Now, <laughs> I'm not as explicit as I'm actually going to get. So. And I want this one and this one. Anyway, so. The other thing she was saying about people getting free books from companies or people sending them to people. Um, I have never been sent a book by another member of the colouring community, nor do I ever expect to. I have received free books in the past, and I still do. I received a, a free PDF from Jade Summer to review um, a book a long time ago, which was the Kawaii Girls book. And I am currently a member of the Ava Brown launch team and they send me a link to a PDF copy of every new book they put out. So if you ever see a PDF from an Ava Brown book, it was free. And I always say that this was free. Now, have I coloured in all the books they've sent me? No. But they are PDFs. I don't have to print them up. I choose to. I have um, the HP Instant Ink, so they send me it. It probably costs me just as much to print up my own pages as it does to buy the book in the long run, but we needed the printer. And if I if it was a book I wasn't so keen on, I could just print up a page if I wanted to colour it. I do like to show them on the channel. I do review them all, whether or not I coloured in them. Some of them I colour in straight away, some of them might take a little while for me to, to colour in. Um, but I do leave a review on all of them on Amazon. I usually bulk review them after I've had a bit of time to peruse the pages and decide what I feel. Uh, I will say on the channel if this sort of picture is something I like to do or something I don't like to do. 
Um, but that brings me to my next point is that uh, they did say that people suddenly start buying books that they never would have bought previously because they've seen somebody else had it. Now, basically they said, looking at what you've coloured before, you've never coloured this type of art before, and then suddenly because somebody's got it, you've got to have it. It's not, I, I don't, that I don't agree with completely. The reason being is when I started colouring back in, I don't know, 2016, when it came to people and things, I liked to colour people that looked like people, real people. So the sort of Selena Fennec goddesses and gothic, they looked like people. And by that I'm saying I wasn't so keen on the chibi art and the kawaii art and all that stuff. As I got more into colouring and started exploring the different styles, uh, you know, and Hannah Lynn and the Big Eyed Girls never really liked them to start with. They didn't look realistic and I liked realistic art. I started thinking, hmm, now that's a nice picture I've seen done by somebody. Who's that art by? Oh, it's Hannah Lynn. Mm, not really keen on that kind of girl, but I like that picture. Maybe I'll like some more. So I went and onto their website and uh, signed up. And you, every now and again, you get sent a freebie. And I was sent a, a PDF of free images. And I looked at them, I printed them out, I looked at them and I thought, actually I do quite like this style and I started colouring it. And I really enjoyed it. So you can change. Your style uh, will change as you change. Uh, the more you colour, the more your art style will change. The more what you like to colour will change. I still love colouring realistic people. But that doesn't mean to say I can't enjoy colouring a chibi girl every now and again. I'm not keen on, on white stag. Now I know people love white stag and that's fair enough. Um, the artwork's good. But I'm, I don't really like the Misfits series. I don't. However, she was re the white stag was recently featured in the Colouring Heaven Unicorn special. I haven't coloured in it. And out of all the unicorns featured, the white stag ones were my favourite. So again, my art style and what I like to colour is evolving and I'm not going to ever say I'm never going to colour a white stag picture because I know that's not true and one day Misfits might be something I really like. The other one is um oh they put out a book called Gorgeous, who's that by? Santori? Georgius? Something like that was called Gorgeous and the girls don't have faces and I find that freaky. That's just me. That doesn't mean to say that everybody else has to dislike them or not want to colour them. It's just personal taste. And personal taste changes over years and over time. Of course it does. My personal taste has changed lots. It still is changing even now. I was never a big cat fan. Dogs I adore. Cats I was never fond of. I've got a pleading kitten now. I love him to bits. I'm actually in love with the cat. Which is something I would never thought I would live to say. I love my kitten. I would not want to be without him. He is adorable. People can change and their art styles can change. So that, there's that. You know what I mean? Now, that doesn't mean to say that in five years' time I'm going to love colouring the things I don't. I still might not be that keen on them. But I might. Now, I'm a huge fan of Marilyn Monroe. We all know this. It's a fact. You've seen it on the channel. One of the pictures I recently coloured, and you'll see it in my finished pages, is the one from The Beauty of Horror of Marilyn. The beauty of horror. Blood pouring out of her face. No eyes. Just empty eye sockets. Do you know what? There will be fans who will be offended by that. And they have every right to be. And once I wouldn't have liked it, I would have thought it was, you know, degrade into her image. But now I think this is, this is fun. It's, it's, you know, it's no harm. It's not doing anybody any harm. I know how wonderful she was. I know how beautiful she was. I've coloured this picture. I loved colouring it in. Um, I love every picture in that book. I will colour that book a lot. I, I guarantee it. I love it. 
but just because excuse me a minute my my tv's gone a bit funny I'm just gonna put it back on ready but just because I like it doesn't mean to say everybody else has got to it's their right to say they don't like it but you can't say I'm not a Marilyn fan because I've coloured something that looks like that but there are a lot of fans who will think that a girl I know got given a skeletal Marilyn with a skirt blowing scene and somebody said oh these people aren't obviously fans of Marilyn and yet everybody on that had quoted commented on it who actually liked it a long time Marilyn fans because we know the difference between the real person and the fake images and there are things that we don't like um, when it comes to the portrayal of Marilyn and her life and death that is worse than a skeletal figure or a picture of her dead or like a zombie it's, it's just people get offended for no reason these days I mean, I'm not keen on the tattoo ones. And Marilyn would never have wanted people to see her dead with no eyes. That's true. I know Marilyn. But I think she would also be amazed that she inspires people to do this. I, if, I mean, and it's clearly artwork. If it was a photograph that had been made like that, I'd probably be something different. I don't like the Photoshop pictures of her where they've made her nude where the original picture wasn't. I don't like Photoshop pictures of her with tattoos because she never would have had one. But I, there's a difference between art and a photograph. I don't like ta photographs being tampered with in that way, although they would have been not Photoshopped. We didn't have it back in the 50s, but I'm not that old. I'm only 47. They didn't have it back in those days, but they did hand retouch them with inks, you know, and they did stuff in the dark room that was amazing but does that mean I mean there's a difference between that and, and what you can do with a photograph today the photoshopping that goes on today is horrendous it looks so fake because everything was done by hand it was made to look like it, nothing had been done and it's only when you put two photographs two photographs together that you can tell the difference so there's one of Joan Crawford that had been retouched and made her look flawless and one the actual original photograph which hadn't where you could see her some blemishes on her still beautiful skin they were just as beautiful but with said blemishes but that was Hollywood and that's how they did it it's no different now with Photoshop it's just that they go to extremes um, So, and they do people go to extremes but with art I don't have a problem with somebody depicting Marilyn like that it's been done so many times they're being shown deceased dead zombified skeletonized I mean there are other ones that are more recent that you could potentially take offense to there's one of Amy Winehouse in there Robin Williams is in there don't see Robin Williams' fans getting up in arms about it. You've also got James Dean and Elvis. It's a great book. There are flip through oops. <laughs> I'll sort that out afterwards. On on YouTube if you want to look at it. It's the Beauty of Horror 5. Uh, Haunt of Fame. It's my favourite of the books. I'm not gonna lie. It is my favourite. I absolutely think it's the best. Because um excuse me. It is I, I love anything to do with Hollywood and fame and stuff like that so for me it's great some of the people in it aren't even dead there's John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever he's not dead there's the Golden Girls one of them at least one of them is not dead one of the Bee Gees they're not all dead interestingly the one they did of Abbey Road doesn't feature the two living Beatles only features the two de deceased ones and then Gugliana and another ghoul but it's a great book if you like that sort of thing and some people do and some people don't and you know what you're all entitled to that same opinion if you like it you like it if you don't you don't you know there's stuff I don't like I don't tell people that they're wrong because they like a certain band or a certain art style or a certain TV series I don't like reality for TV. I don't see the point in it. People love it. People love Love Island and all that stuff. 
it's not for me. That doesn't mean to say anybody who watches it is stupid or wrong, it's their opinion. Let them get on with it, I say. There's just so much going on in the world right now that we've got to take our entertainment and our enjoyment where we can. I mean, at the moment, there's a fuel shortage. Well, not. Um, there's panic buying at fuel stations because the press said that there was going to be a fuel shortage or there was a fuel shortage. No, what it was is one company, one company, had an issue with drivers of their tankers. One company. So the media obviously blew this up all out of proportion, caused a panic, and now it's hard to get fuel anywhere. Did I go panic buying fuel? No. Partly because A, my car was in the garage being fixed, and B, I still got half a tank. So, because I got half a tank, I'm not going to go buying fuel. I would like to top it up a bit after it reaches a quarter, because I don't like it to go below a quarter. Um, but, do you know what? I get paid tomorrow. Well, today when you see this, I might go out on Saturday. If I see a petrol station that has got no queue. I'll nip in and get 20 quid's worth of diesel. Maybe 30. But I ain't going to go mad. I don't need that much. Just keep it topped up over a quarter of a tank. And I'm happy. It's not like I'm going to work every day. It's do shopping, run Jennifer around, run my parents around because they're elderly. And if they need to go to the doctors, I need to take them. I have to take my dad to Astrid at some point to pick something up and I, that's fine I don't mind but yeah it is I, I do wonder about people people are idiots basically they believe anything that they're told and then they panic by and make the problem that there was they make a problem that wasn't there there was there is no fuel shortage tankers are delivering every day they're delivering more than they, they usually do because people are panic buying. It, this is what happened when uh, the pandemic broke out and lockdown was happening. Everybody went out buying hundreds of toilet rolls. Like, you know, like you were going to beat the zombie apocalypse with bog roll. It was ridiculous. And some people say it's because people like to have control and this gives them some sort of control over their lives. I can't control this. But hey, I can fill my tank with petrol or I can buy toilet rolls. I can stock up on that. I never, I don't. Don't think that way. If I can't control it, I can't control I I can't control what's going on. I can try and make a difference in, in little places like with in people's lives by making a difference to individuals. I can help by not using my car as much and by turning lights off and stuff and fuel is going up in price at the moment. I think it's because I had some C B T a few years ago and the one thing they taught me was to think that don't worry about what hasn't happened yet. You can't do anything about what hasn't happened yet. Focus on today and what's happening now. And I don't panic. If, if somebody says there's a fuel shortage, I'll say, well, if there is, there is. If I have to walk, I have to walk. You know, if I can't get, you know, if I can't get fuel, I can't get fuel. If there's no toilet paper, I use newspaper. That's what they used to do back in the day. There's always ways around it. No pasta? I'll have something else. No turkey for Christmas? Fine. I'll see what else there is. It might be a, a joint of beef or a leg of lamb. Don't bother me. As long as there's food on the table, I'll have beans on toast. Not the end of the world. The whole point about Christmas is being together as a family and with the people you love. Not about what food's on the table, as long as there is some kind of food on the table. Not about how many presents are under the tree, as long as you're together. I don't know why people worry about what they can't control. Don't, I mean, it's what I used to. I used to think, oh my God, what happened? What, what if this happens or what if that happens? And now I'm gonna say, now I think to myself, well, it hasn't happened. It might happen or it's gonna happen one day. But it hasn't happened yet. So I'm going to deal with it when it happens. Prepare for the future by all means. You know, save a bit of money for your retirement. You might get, you know, I'm saving for Jennifer's future. But don't, don't worry about what you can't control. If you can't control 
it stopped recording. I don't think it was long. I do, I suffer with my mental health. I do get depressed, as you know. But I am grateful for everything I've got, you know? Got a roof over my head. I've got food in my cupboards. I've got light, I've got heat. I've got a job, I've got my beautiful daughter. At the moment, we've all got our health. Hopefully, it will stay that way. I'm not overly religious, so I'm not gonna say God willing because I'm not a hypocrite. I mean, I do use some phrases sometimes like there, but for the grace of God, but it's usually as an example of, of something. But I, I am grateful for everything I've got and it may sound twee and easy, but that doesn't stop me from getting depressed every now and again. And you see, it's because of things that are happening to the world outside. Like this person that put the video out about the color in. I know people were hurt and people are valid. That's a valid, that's a valid reaction. Okay, just because it didn't hurt me, it doesn't mean to say they have. Oh dear, Jennifer's having night terrors. We're gonna check on her in a minute. Any less valid than my not caring or not being bothered by it. Everything is valid. But the, the vitriol and the abuse that this person has had on the back of this video of opinions is nothing short of bullying. Not from the main YouTubers who have, have been hurt and who have reacted by putting videos out saying that they've been hurt. They've just said that they've been hurt and they don't agree and, and they don't feel that they should have to justify why they do what they do. And I agree, nobody should have to justify anything. But from general, other people who are not YouTubers, who are not, you know, there's nothing short than abuse and bullying. Some of the things I've read. Sorry, she's having night terrors. I can tell by the way she's crying. And there's, I hate this. I can, there's nothing I can do. I will go and check on her, I think. I'll be back in a second. Right, just checked on Jen. She's fine. Um, the strange thing is, even though it's a night terror, she always knows when I'm there. She always knows it. And she, in her sleep, still crawls onto me. Because she wasn't calling. If she'd have woken up and wanted wanted one of us, she'd have been yelling. She's got a strange child. She's gone back to sleep now. She's fine. Cuddling one of her bunnies. I went downstairs, up to the bathroom. The cat was still sitting on pole. Which is cute, obviously. So, I think, hmm, let me just check this colour. I don't know where my polychrome swatches are. It's a bit yellow, actually. How about that colour? That's not too bad. Not on that. I'll get the cream out. That one will go. Perfect. I think. What colour is that? Cream. So, yeah. So enough of all that drama. It's over. Let's move on. Um, I've always found the colouring community to be very positive, very welcoming. Behave. Um, very informative and helpful. Everybody's really nice. So. And uh, I've got friends that I've made through the colouring. Um, I'm grateful to them. Um, so I managed to finish all the buddy colours I had this month. I had three, Molly Newland, one with Chelsea Murray, and one with John from uh, Colouring by Moonlight. He's finishing his off in the next day or so. Um, but it's great, yeah, they're, they're all finished, so I'm glad she's gone back to sleep. Do we think the puppy's been eating the um, pear? I think he took a bite out of it. I think he did. <laughs> oh dear.
do you? It's quite funny actually. Uh, that one. Um, that one. This one now can come back out. So. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just waiting. I had my flu jab. Probably will end up having a COVID booster because of my asthma. Wait and see about that, to be honest. We'll have to wait and see. Some over here as well. So I'm, I'm probably not going to finish this one tonight and I probably won't finish on camera because it's only going to be a little bit of background and stalks and things so we can finish that later I'm not giving up yet though we haven't finished yet right put that red back for now those two go in there, put those back, I need to sort these out really, yeah, I'm just going to put a little bit of brown in around the edge of this where the bites are, again this is just this gold I've used down here, it's just a little Good fun, isn't it? <laughs> I think he's gorgeous, this little guy. Excuse me. You know, it goes a bit brown when you've um, taken a bite out of something, a piece of fruit, and you just leave it. it tends to go a bit brown. Yeah, I'm enjoying this one. And that's that. Butterfly. So the big news on Doctor Who is that of course Russell T Davis is coming back to uh, the showrunner again in uh, 2023 because he was the guy who brought it back in the first place and now he is coming back to um, excuse me, take over from Christopher Chibnall. Um, people are very excited about that because they've not enjoyed the Chibnall story arc of the um, Time as Child. Some people have liked Jodie Whittaker, some people haven't. I think she would have been good if she'd had better stories. I think uh, the storylines let her down and I'm nothing against about putting political correctness in and history wise like with the Rosa Parks one I really enjoyed yet people didn't like that episode for some reason. I think you can do it without shoving it down your throat, around people's throats. Um, and Russell T Davis, he said he's quite blatant, but I think it was blatant in keeping with the storyline and the whole of the Doctor Who premise. You didn't, he didn't go and entirely wreck on the entire. History, and now Doctor Who has a history of retcon in itself anyway. From the very first time the Doctor regenerated, that's a retcon, because we knew nothing about that until it happened. So, do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> Doctor Who, it, it retcons itself every time, you know. But the biggest thing about making 
the 13 Doctors we've had, not the original 13. That did get on people's wick, it did get to them. But we will see, we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting to see. He's coming back for the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who, which is going to be fantastic. I mean, the fact that it's still being made at the moment is great. Whether or not they'll keep making it for much longer. If it doesn't, it won't have lasted as long as it did the first time around, which is interesting, but hey. That's down to the BBC. There's not a lot of programmes that I watch on TV, but that is when I do watch Doctor Who. Um, Ghosts is another one. That's a good series. Call the Midwife. I love Call the Midwife. Who doesn't love a bit of Call the Midwife? It's great. I don't watch the soaps. I used to, I'll admit it. I mean, when I was at home, I had no choice because Mum watches them all. Uh, when I lived at home, if we were downstairs, Coronation Street was on, Emmerdale's on, Neighbours was on, Home and Away was on, EastEnders she was on. And I used to watch EastEnders, yeah, back in the day. But, uh, I don't watch any of it now. Used to watch Casualty and Holby quite a lot. Don't really watch that anymore. I think the thing is with streaming, you can watch things when you want to, and I think that is great. You're not beholden to watching stuff when it's actually on. I mean, we weren't in the in the 80s and 90s because you could videotape it. And you only had maybe four or five channels, unless you paid out a lot of money for Sky. And we never did. We couldn't afford it. So... From that point of view, you know. It was like somebody said, who buys DVDs these days? Well, a lot of people still buy DVDs. If nobody was buying them, they wouldn't make them. Some people prefer to have tangible things. And, and I get why people prefer the, the, to have it, have not have stuff around. But you're beholden to the streaming service. If they suddenly decide they don't want to show Doctor Who anymore, or they don't want to show... Oh, God, I don't know. Um... A classic movie. Say, for instance, you've been you like watching classic movies, and they've had. I say, for instance, uh, Meet Me in St. Louis with um, Judy Garland on the streaming service for the last four years. Suddenly, they made decide to get rid of it. You can't then go. Oh, hang on a minute. I was. What, I want to watch that again. You're beholden to them. You got it on DVD or Blu-ray. You can watch it whenever you want. You don't have to wait for them to put it back on again or wait for it to come on another channel or streaming service. So, I'm happy with, you know. I, I know lots of people who literally just collect DVDs and Blu-rays. Lots of people do. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. If that makes you happy. I mean... Just because people have the option of having ebooks doesn't mean to say they don't buy physical books. Obviously, we still do. People still use film cameras more so now than five years ago, and it's growing. People buy vinyl records. Why? Because they want the tangibility, they, you know, and these are people that have grown up without them. They've grown up in this digital age. And there's nothing wrong with them wanting the tangibility and there's nothing wrong with people who don't want it.
It's each to their own, I believe. Paul doesn't like a lot of stuff around. I like having clutter. I, I feel safer. I mean, it is a safety thing. I like having it. Obviously, I don't keep everything. It's impossible. I've got rid of a lot of stuff and I still get rid of stuff. I don't keep every book I've ever read. God, I'd, I'd need a, uh, a library the size of the National Library of Wales for that. But I do love books and I still collect books, just not all of them. I collect books on ancient Egypt, occasionally I'll buy one of them. I collect books on Hollywood, um, Jack the Ripper, I collect books on Marilyn Monroe. There are a few fictional authors I collect such as Jodie Taylor and um, Andrew Cartmel. Stephen King, my friend Michelle Morgan as well. So there are a few, but they're not not everybody. I don't keep every single book I read. I'd have too many. I've got a load of books I need to read. Uh, all the ones on the top of the shelf, I probably won't keep any of those. Except for there's a hard copy of uh, Dracula. And I can't see what that is behind there, but it looks interesting. Um, and the Hollywood ones. Obviously, I collect the Hollywood books. I always have. I'm always going to. I love stuff on Hollywood. Hollywood is my big thing. I also collect books on photography and history and stuff. Not as much because, oh dear, I didn't like that, did it? No. It needs emptying this thing. I'll take it and then I'll empty it out in a minute. Here, I'm literally just going to finish the butterfly off and that's going to be it for today. Um, I will finish this off. Oh yeah, it's full. Very full. Too full. Far too full. That's why it's not happy. Uh, and then you'll see it in my final, in my complete pages. I am going to go and finish it off tonight. Oops. I'm just going to finish the butterfly. Um, and then... Uh, it, there's only a little bit like the background and the doors and then the tops of the, the bells and that's it and his nose and then I will fill that off finish that off and you'll see it again so I've really enjoyed this I hope you have enjoyed this little chat um, let me know what you think down below about the colouring community a drama I don't think it's worth getting too worried about um we're only a small community. It's growing, but it is small. Hopefully it will continue to grow and we'll get lots of lovely new people in. If you're a colourist and you enjoy colouring and you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, do it. Just do it. It's just fun. Don't take it so seriously. Don't think you're going to make money on it because you're not going to make a lot, trust me. <laughs> Even when you do get to your thousand subscribers and they allow you to monetize, you are not going to make a fortune. You may make a little bit and it may be enough to buy you a few supplies and things or some books, but you're not going to make a fortune. We're not talking PewDiePie or Jordan the Lion or even Adam the Woo levels of revenue. And, you know, they are the, perhaps some of the better, bigger YouTubers. But, yeah, just, just do it for because you enjoy making the videos. Um, do it because you enjoy colouring, that you want to share your colouring. If you've got any hints and tips, you can share them. Any supplies you enjoy. That's what it's about. It's about helping each other in the community and just showing your love for the medium of colouring books and adult colouring, um, which is why I do it. So, and if you stop, if you if you don't stop enjoying doing it for a while, take a break. Nobody's gonna mind if you take a month off. Um, as I said, I had somebody. One of my subscribers contacted me. Um, I know her on Facebook as well. She lives local to me asking if I was alright and um, because I hadn't posted and then there was somebody else who deleted their channel I said yeah I'm fine I've just been busy and uh, I'll be filming very very soon so hello Julie this is for you um, but yeah if you're thinking about starting a channel just go ahead and do it it's a lot of fun uh, we do it because we love the medium not because we want to make money not because we want to be special or famous it's because we just have fun colouring. So this is all you're going to see of this till now. Like I said, all I've got is these tops to do 
his little nose and the uh, wooden door here and the stalks. And I'm going to finish that off later. Um, and you'll see it in my finished pages because I will make sure I finish it. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Please leave me a comment down below. We are going to be colouring with some new markers in the next colouring chat. We're going to be colouring in Hannah Lynn's Women's Girls at Work book. I haven't chosen the page yet, but that's the book. And we're going to be using the Windsor Newton Pro markers because I've now got enough to be able to colour a whole page and do skins and everything. So I'm really looking forward to that. I haven't used them yet, so this is going to be all new. So join me for that in the next one. That'll be coming up in, well, it'll be in October now, but uh, yeah. I'll see you all soon. Bye, everybody.